in the early months of 2019, the glorious PC gaming race company released a mouse that has changed the industry for the better, delivering a mouse with a good shape, excellent weight, top optical sensor, a flexible cable, high quality materials and buttons, at a price point that's likely to remain exceedingly competitive. Whilst Glorious is still a relatively new challenger in the mouse space, their first attempt has been an outstanding success and sets the tone for the range of products that Glorious will release in the future. That's right, you guessed it, we're doing it, because you clicked on this video. Today, we're checking out the Glorious Model O, and it's worth mentioning that the version I've got here today is the pre-purchased launch edition in matte white. But what this means is that there's a couple of changes to the QC and the cabling, all of which we'll be going through today in this video. The shape is a medium-sized ambidextrous design. The shape is intended for a fingertip grip and excels in this category as one of the best fingertip shapes, putting it up there with other designs focusing on this grip, such as the Steel Series Sensei and the FK Series of Mice. The mouse has very flat sides on the front, and whilst I did not have any issues keeping my pinky and ring fingers in place when lifting the mouse on my matte copy, the glossy versions may prove to be a little too slippery. The rear hump design can be a little unwelcoming if you're a palm grip user, however with a small enough hand the mouse can fill the entirety of your palm, and the slightly longer length of the mouse does allow for some good control when palming the mouse. My advice would be, if you have a smaller hand, to always go for the smaller mouse. The Model O has some very familiar dimensions if you're an FK user, the shape on the Model O is heavily based off of the Zowie FK1. However, the mouse does deviate from the FK's design in a couple of areas. We get the same length of 128mm from the front to rear, which can be found on the FK1. The front grip measures in at 61mm and is 26mm tall. The middle grip comes in at 59mm and sits 37.5mm at the highest point. Lastly, the rear hump widens to 66mm and gradually slopes downwards towards the mouse mat. There are only millimetres in difference between this mouse and the FK1, both of which feel very similar in the hand. The best way to approach the Model O is to think of it as an FK1 that shed a layer of skin and feels marginally smaller. The shape, however, is where the similarities end, as the Model O is considerably lighter and weighs in at 67 grams for the matte copies and 68 grams for the glossy versions, when compared to the 88 grams for the FK1. The mouse is extremely lightweight, and I found this very difficult to manage at first, even when browsing normally on Windows on a DPI as low as 400. Felt very sensitive. Many have made the comparison between the Model O and the Razer Viper Ultimate, and whilst I intend to save some of this discussion for the Viper's review, the two mice look very similar, yet feel very different in the hand. The hump on the back of the Model O feels slightly larger than the Viper, and is more comparable to the Zowie FK1. The grip width on these mice feel identical however, the Model O flares more towards the rear, giving you the impression that it's the larger mouse. Whilst the front buttons sit at almost equal height, the comfort grooves on the Model O are definitely larger and make the mouse feel more raised in comparison. On a final note, the Model O is convincingly longer from end to end as well. Which would I recommend based off of an 18x9 hand size? There's no clear winner, and our preference will be the deciding factor. Based purely off the shape alone, the Model O may suit your needs with its extra length and rounded out proportions, whilst those who prefer a slightly smaller shape will want to look towards the Razer Viper. The Model O is intended for right hand users, and it reflects this by having a lack of side buttons for lefties. They are considerably small, however, they do provide a solid click with minimal pre-travel. The top buttons are separated from the rear shell, and are using Omerons as the switch. Again, very clicky and tactile. No complaints from me. We also get a DPI button underneath the scroll wheel. It's very small, so it's difficult to click accidentally. However, Glorious does offer some very straightforward software which can be used to turn it off. The underside of the mouse also includes a small DPI light which you can use to figure out which DPI setting you are on. Glorious has also included a slightly raised tip for the cable, meaning that it will not drag across your mouse map. It's a very welcome change and it's a trend that I'm glad Glorious have picked up on. Speaking of cable, the Model O comes with the ascended cable. Whilst it lacks the flexibility of a power cord, it is still a massive improvement when compared to a standard rubber cable. The cable on my copy is the slightly older version, and the only real difference is that this one is slightly looser than the new one and makes it feel more like a shoelace than a cable.
we have got some RGB on the mouse. It's worth noting that the white models of this mouse will reflect the lighting more than the black ones and gives us this really cool effect. The scroll wheel on the Model O is buttery smooth and silent. Middle clicks are rather firm, but nothing I would call an issue. On the bottom of the mouse you will find a Pixar 3360 sensor, so there's very little room for improvement here. The sensor implementation is also very good, and there also does appear to be some grooves around the sensor itself, however I'm not quite sure what the purpose of this is. If you have any ideas then please let me know in the comments. One thing I do want to mention is that the Glorious Model O has a huge amount of modding potential. Glorious have recently started shipping custom coloured paracords, which are extremely easy to install and requires zero heat shrinking. You can remove the branding very easily on the white copies by sanding down the sides for a clean aesthetic. The RGB strips can also be removed very easily, saving yourself around 8 to 10 grams. You can shell swap the Model O to get a black slash white theme. If you wanted to keep your Model O with Glorious only products, then they've recently released these grip tapes which you can get for the Model O and some other other mice too. Want to make this thing wireless? No problem. Grab yourself a G305 PCB and whack it in there. Literally, the sky is your limit with this mouse. You will struggle to find a mouse in the same price point which has the same level of accessible mods and versatility. I've also included a link in the video description to some of the mods you can find in this guide. Need the gun, you can't. <laughs> the Model O's software is very intuitive, allowing for three different mouse profiles, DPI, polling rate, lift-off distance, and debounce time can all be changed in the software. The DPI indicator lights under the mouse can also be reconfigured, which is a really nice touch. Button settings also have some interesting features, such as a fire key, allowing you to click up to 100 times per second, as well as media controls and macros. Unsurprisingly, your RGB settings can also be changed, with some notable settings being the Glorious mode, which cycles colours from the top to bottom of the mouse, and the Rave mode, which if left on the higher speed can make your mouse look like it's having a seizure. The clicks on the side buttons are solid, same with the mouse 1 and 2. Omarons are great for players looking for sharp and snappy sounds, and are considered to be one of the best switches on the market. Shell strength is solid overall, with weaknesses only to be found in the bottom plate. Everywhere else on the mouse feels solid, perhaps with the exception of the side panels. As with all honeycomb mice, the shell will expose the mouse's internals, however sweat and debris should not affect the lifespan of the mouse as the PCBs are coated. Button wobble is present on mouse 1 and 2, however it should not affect you whilst during the game. The older copies of the Glorious Model O are also notorious for being able to activate mouse 4 by pinching the shell. I do not consider this to be a major downside, as it requires a purposeful amount of pressure to activate and will not be an issue when using the mouse in-game. Speaking of which, how does it feel in-game? At first, I did not like the Model O and I struggled to use it. The first six months of me owning the mouse, it spent a lot of its time in the box. And I found this frustrating because the feature set of this mouse made it a very solid choice for FPS games. I could never really work out why I wouldn't click with it. I found it very hard to adjust since I was used to heavier mice. However, over time, I lowered my sense and I picked up other lightweights such as the Viper Ultimate and the Endgame XM1. I thought it was worth trying out those mice more to see if I can use it. And after taking a good amount of time to adjust, I found myself more used to the weight and began preferring it over my heavier counterparts. 70 grams is at least from my perspective as low as you should need to go. It offers a good balance of being easy to move around and lift, whilst not being too light to suffer from over flicking or being unable to make fine adjustments. Any lower and you would simply need to begin changing your sensitivities to counteract the weight of the mouse. Similar to how the length of the FK series allows you to make fine adjustments, the same can be said for the Model O, allowing you to pivot your wrist and feel more confident when taking shots that you feel like you would normally miss. Whilst I've benefited from previously using the Razer Viper Ultimate's wireless technology, um, I used the outdated flex cable from Glorious and I couldn't find myself noticing that much difference. I am letting my opinion bleed into this section of the review, however if your head is in the game and you're focused on playing, a good wire can be just as unobtrusive as a wireless mouse. I have always said that Zowie feet were top tier, as they used two larger strips instead of the four individual feet. Glorious's implementation of the feet is very solid and I have no issues with the glide, even when pushing the mouse firmly into the pad. 
There is a lot to like about this mouse, and if you're someone that's interested in picking up a lightweight mouse without needing to compromise on overall size to achieve a lighter weight, then the Model O could be your endgame. It's definitely worth experimenting with if you're familiar with the FK shapes and are looking for an upgrade. I don't normally mention price in my reviews, however the mouse is feature rich and performs extremely well for the money you pay for it. That being said, lighter mice may not be to your preference and you will require some time to break in if you're used to anything that's 80 grams or heavier. If you take away the nuances like the side click issues and the wobbly mouse buttons, this mouse is tier 1 and I expect it to stay on top, especially if Glorious releases an updated version or even a wireless copy. I've said it once but I'm going to say it again, Glorious deserves all the praise they're due for their first mouse being this successful and competitive. If this review picks up some speed, then I may even consider getting my hands around a Glorious Model D, or even doing a Model O- review and doing a follow up. I'm going to leave a poll in the link below to let you guys choose the mouse I review next. I look forward to seeing what you guys choose, but until next time, take care and hope to see you in the next video. If you're interested to see what's inside of here from an unboxing perspective, be sure to check out the unboxing video I did a couple of months back in the link below. And until next time, farewell. One thing I do want to mention is that the Glorious Model Ho the glorious model hoe, for fuck's sake. <laughs>